Well, good evening. My name is uh, Josh Manley. The last four years, my wife, my family, and I have lived at the northern tip of the Arabian Peninsula in a place called Ras Al Khaimah in the United Arab Emirates. Someone knows where Ras Al Khaimah is. Uh, now, for me, my life plan wasn't to move across an ocean to, to plant and to pastor a church in the Middle East. My wife and I actually met and married when we worked as aides in the United States Senate in Washington, D.C. That was my life plan. But during our time there, God graciously used the local church that we were members of to grow in us both a, a love for the church and a deep understanding that the church is the manifold wisdom of God in the world, that the church is God's evangelism plan for reaching the nations. Now this particular nation has gone through quite a unique political season this past year to say the least. But I can say with all contentment in the Lord that I'm grateful that in an early age the Lord gave me an opportunity to see the, the kingdom of this world and all its power and all of its greatness. And to understand deeply that it's not the strong and the wise things of the world, but the foolish and the weak that the Lord is using to accomplish His eternal purposes in Christ. During our time in Washington, D.C., we saw very clearly that it's not the levers of power in this world, but that God is using that which makes much of the power of God, the church. It was in that confidence that my wife and I left good jobs in Washington, D.C., and we did what is considered foolishness in the eyes of this world. We moved so that I could prepare for long-term preaching ministry in the church. And as I was pursuing theological education about five years ago, little did I know that through a series of events and the faithfulness of a Christian, the Lord was working in the heart and in the mind of an Arab sheikh to grant land on the Arabian Peninsula for a gospel preaching church. Now just to give you some context, on the Arabian Peninsula you cannot buy land for this purpose. It must be granted. It must be decreed. And yet unknown to this sheikh, God's people had been praying that the Lord would open doors for gospel preaching churches to be planted. And this land grant represented the fourth time in the history of this, this country, the United Arab Emirates, that land had been given for an evangelical church in that place. You know, the scriptures reveal to us very clearly our triune God who will not be stopped by the rulers and the authorities and the powers of this world. Well, given a long relationship I had with Pastor John Fulmer, who has preached and pastored in the UAE for over 10 years, I was asked if I would be willing to move to Ras Al Khaimah with my family to plant a church and to raise the necessary funds that would be needed to construct and to build a building for long-term, stable, visible ministry in that place. And so my wife and I had a decision to make. And even, even here at a, at a student missions conference, I will, will not tell you that that decision was easy. We loved the states. We loved the situation. We loved the church that we were in, serving in, in the states at that time. And I knew personally there was absolutely nothing wrong was staying in the United States. But as I considered this opportunity, it, it became very apparent to me that the, the need was great, that this opportunity itself was very clear and it was rare, that the Lord deserved to have his name known and proclaimed in that place. He deserved to have his church gathered and living in witness there, and that ultimately this was a risk that was worth taking with our brief lives. And so we crossed. And I stand here today to tell you that as I look back over the last four years, while it's been far from easy, at times it's been discouraging and confusing and lonely, it has been good. And the Lord has been faithful. This coming spring, Lord willing, a congregation will go into that building, a congregation that is now led by elders, a congregation that loves the gospel, a congregation that together we are making God's gospel known in a needy place. You know, we should be the people who expect that if the Great Commission is going to be fulfilled, that the Lord is going to continue to both 
open extraordinary doors and use the ordinary faithfulness of his people. And we should be the people who are committed to seeing the commission fulfilled through the manifold wisdom of God in the church. So we have to have a, a sense of urgency about us to see the gospel go forward in the world, and yet we also have to have patience to be faithful in the way that we go about advancing it. When we commit ourselves to the church, we announce to the world, both the seen world and the unseen world, that we are committed to God's wisdom and God's ways and not our own. And so we bring God maximum glory. You know, our world and its wisdom, it dismisses, it persecutes, it marginalizes, it maligns the Lord's church. The last day will reveal that it was not the strong things or the wise things of the world. It was the foolish and the weak that the Lord was using. That it was not Im impressive corporations or, or fancy universities or great political institutions. It was that local church, pastored, participated in faithfully, planted in a place where there was great need, that God was accomplishing His eternal purposes in Christ. And while the, the kingdoms of this world, while the, the power politics of our day are, are what dominate our, our nightly news and they, they capture the world's attention, on the last day they will prove to have been nothing more than a sideshow to what God was doing in Christ through the Spirit, through the church, as His gospel conquers hearts throughout the globe. What an utter privilege it's been for me to go and to take part in the great work that God is doing in history, in the world, and even a small way in a place that desperately needs God's gospel. What a joy to cross because Jesus went to the cross. To Him be the glory. Thank you.